In this video, I'll share with you what chiropractic adjustments actually do. Now, to make good healthcare decisions and so you don't waste money, you need proper information. But unfortunately, as a chiropractor for over 27 years, a lot of the information about chiropractic adjustments I've seen has been misleading or just plain wrong. So in this video, I'll do my best to give you the best, most useful information I can. Now, the best way to do that is to start with the problems chiropractors treat and the issues they cause, and then discuss how adjustments are used to correct them. Now, with that in mind, chiropractic is a very large profession. Individual chiropractors may do other things or have add-on therapies, so I'll be just covering the basic problems most patients have and the fundamental things they need to be corrected. Now looking at the problems chiropractors treat first, the descriptions range from the simplistic bone out of place or misaligned vertebrae through to lengthy descriptions of vertebral subluxation complexes. Now the problem is that the simplistic descriptions are just plain wrong. While the lengthy descriptions tend to be a long list of causes, symptoms and effects all mixed in together, so it's almost impossible to get a clear picture of what's actually going on. The best way to get that clear picture is to look at what goes wrong with your spine, then look at the problems it causes. Now, this is what a spine should normally do. Now, when you stand straight, all the vertebrae should sit balanced on top of each other, and when you bend, they should all move about the same amount. Now, when an individual joint stiffen and doesn't move as it should, that causes problems. Now, let's look at an example. Now, in this pic, the bottom vertebrae should be able to move freely from side to side, but it's actually stiffened up and tilted slightly to the left. Now, when the spine bends to the left, everything looks okay because the problem vertebrae is bent that way. Now, when it's trying to stand straight, you can see the bottom vertebrae is still slightly tilted to the left, and the one above has to tilt back a bit to try and straighten and balance the spine. Now the biggest problem is, is when the spine tries to bend in the opposite direction. Now the bottom joint is still stiffened and still slightly to the left, so the joints above are forced to bend way more to compensate. Now the technical name for these spinal problems is a dysfunction. But I'll just stick to the plain language and say it's functioning abnormally. So, what causes spines to do this? Well, there's a lot of things that can cause individuals spinal joints to stiffen. Now I've listed a few of them here. Now, as you can see, uh, there are things practically everyone does, so that's why these problems are so common. Now you've seen what actually happens, let's look at the problems it causes. Now, so you know what I'm talking about, the first thing I need to do is show some basic spinal anatomy. Now, I'll keep it very simple. Now you can see the pic of this vertebrae is stacked on top of each other. Now between the vertebrae and in front you've got the discs, which are flexible pads, and at the back we've got sliding joints that help guide your movement. Now those levers at the side of the muscles to attach to help move the vertebrae. And lastly we've got nerves coming out the holes at the side. Now, now let's look at the problems that abnormal function causes. Now looking at this pic, we've got the bottom vertebrae tilted and slightly to the right. And straight away it's putting extra pressure on those two small joints marked with the red dots. Now the bottom one's got the extra pressure because the vertebrae is tilted that way and the one above has to tilt back to straighten the spine. Now that extra pressure causes irritation and inflammation of the joints and makes them more prone to being injured. Now of course if it continues the joint will wear quickly giving degenerative or arthritic changes. Now with that happening you'll eventually start to get pain in your spine. Now too often this pain is just treated with rest and inflammatory drugs and maybe injections. Now I hope you can see that uh, these may give temporary relief but of course do absolutely nothing to relieve that normal pressure. So if you treat back pain this way you'll inevitably get more pain and long term the joints will wear out. Now you can also see in this pic that with the bottom joint tilted the spine above is tend to lean to the right. Now when that happens the muscles on the opposite side will automatically tighten to balance your spine. Now those muscles need to be constantly tight just so you can stand up straight and not fall over. Now, as I discussed in an article linked in the description, constant tension is bad for your muscles so they'll eventually become painful 
and when they do, massage and stretching are often used to relieve them. But again, I hope you can see that as long as the bottom vertebrae is tilted, you can have them massage and stretch as much as you like, but they'll automatically re-tighten again. Now when I showed you the basic problem, we saw that uh, when the joint is stiffened and tilted, other joints have to do extra to compensate. Now what we end up with is joints being forced to bend far more than they were ever designed to. And because of that, they'll deteriorate very quickly and maybe be injured. Now when this happens, major alarms go off in your nervous system. And to prevent damage, it'll tighten muscles to act a bit like a splint. So you end up with a spine that's stiff and sore. Now this is where I'll give you a major warning. Well-meaning but ignorant people, including professionals, can give advice that can basically destroy your spine. Now they see the pain and stiffness, but are completely oblivious to the cause, so they prescribe exercises. Now I hope you can see what's going to happen here. The exercises will stretch the muscles and maybe even relieve some of the muscular pain, but it's just going to cause more damage to the compensating joints your body is trying to protect. Now you can only do that so many times before you end up with catastrophic damage. Now on the subject of catastrophic damage, you've probably heard of disc injuries. And they're things that uh, can cause long-term disability and maybe even the need for surgical intervention. As I said before, the discs are cushioning bits that sit between the vertebrae and as this diagram shows, they're a bit like a car tire and they're filled with jelly rather than air. And just like car tyres, abnormal stress over time can cause the walls to weaken and the gel inside starts to push through and press on a nerve. Now there are two ways abnormal spinal function can cause disc problems. Now the first is really obvious. When those compensating joints are forced to bend way more than they were meant to, it puts tremendous stress on the fibres in the walls of the disc. So over time they weaken and fail. The not so obvious way a stiffened joint can destroy a disc is through a lack of movement. Now there are no blood vessels inside a disc so it relies on movement to pump nutrients through it. Now if it's not moving there's no pumping, with no pumping there's no nutrients, and with no nutrients the inside of the disc dies. Now after a while the damage caused by these problems starts showing up on x-rays. Now I'll show you an example. Now the main thing to notice is that there's a normal joint and there's an abnormal joint right next to it. Now this is where I draw your attention to two highly ignorant things patients are told about their x-rays. First, a doctor will point at the changes and say, there's the cause of your problem, and then they'll tell you it's due to old age. Now I'll use a very simple analogy of a car with a worn tire due to a wheel alignment problem to show you how bad this advice is. Now just say you have a wheel alignment problem. Your car generally wanders around the road and doesn't steer properly. And of course, one of the tyres will start to wear abnormally. Now one day you take your car to a mechanic who points to the worn tyre and says, that's your problem, your tyre's worn. It's because your car's getting old. Now you'd think the mechanic was a complete idiot. Now the problem is the wheel alignment, not the tyre. And it's worn because the faulty wheel alignment has been scrubbing it out, not because it's old. However, Doctors get away with saying that stuff all the time. Now the last effect of a normally functioning spine I'll mention is interference to your nervous system. Now it's well known that the nerves do things like control your muscles and allow you to feel things. But as this diagram shows, they also help control most of your bodily functions. Now because of this, any effects to your nervous system can potentially have wide reaching and seemingly unrelated effects. Now, originally chiropractors had what we call the foot on the hose pipe theory, saying that misaligned vertebrae put pressure on nerves and the adjustments relieve the pressure. Now, we know that it's a lot more complicated than that. But to give you an idea of what can potentially happen, abnormal spinal function can either block nerve signals or increase nerve signals by adding static. Now, let's look at an example of each with a sciatic nerve. Blockages stop normal signals from getting through, so they can cause numbness or a loss of control of your foot and ankle, while increased signals or static can cause sciatic and pain. Now, there's been a lot of comments made about chiropractors claiming to relieve nerve interference. Now, back about 100 years ago, chiropractors noticed that seemingly unrelated conditions would improve when spines were adjusted. Now, they started to claim that disease was caused by nerve interference, and by adjusting the spine, they were curing diseases. 
And to put things into perspective, the medics at the time were still using leeches to suck out diseases. And nowadays, all chiropractors understand that there are many possible causes of disease. The overwhelming majority would not claim to be curing diseases, but would acknowledge that interference in the nervous system can cause the body to function abnormally. Now, with this in mind, checking your spine for potential sources of nerve interference is just as sensible as checking for things like blood pressure and cholesterol levels. Now you've seen what spinal problems are and what they cause, let's look at spinal correction. Now the basic premise of chiropractic adjustments is simple. If that normal movement is restored, your spine is free to rebalance and function normally. Now when that happens, your muscles don't need to be tight anymore, the pressure comes off the overstressed joints, and the nerves may no longer be interfered with. Now let's look at the way chiropractic adjustments do that. Now, as we've seen, the key issue is to restore the normal movement of those individual problem joints. Now, I'll show you how chiropractic adjustments do this very specifically, then compare that with the not so good ways of doing it. Now, as this diagram shows, chiropractic adjustments are a specific force directed at the restricted joint. It helps restore movements to that joint while not adversely affecting the others. Now the popping noise you hear is from the restricted joint freeing up. Now this is not easy to do. The restricted joints and compensating joints are very close together. Now the joint movement is complex and the joints are often restricted in some directions while free to move in the others. So to deliver an adjustment you need to analyse the movement of the joints to work out exactly which one is restricted and in which direction and exactly how much. Then you've got to put exactly the right amount of force in the right place in the right direction while not putting force into the one very close by where it would actually be harmful. Now that takes a huge amount of training and practice. Now generally the professions with those skills are chiropractors, osteopaths and some physiotherapists with specialist postgraduate training. In saying that, there's a lot of people ranging from backyard practitioners through to medical practitioners who have done a weekend course that deliver thrusts to spine and make popping noises. Now, these are not specific adjustments. They're just general thrusts put into the whole region of your spine, including the compensating joints that don't want force into them. Now, the last way people try to correct spines is by using exercises. As I've already mentioned, these put general force through your whole spine, so it's the compensating joints that bend, and that's very bad. Now, the next thing I'd like to discuss is whether chiropractic adjustments are a once-off fix or need to be part of a rehabilitation program. Now, to explain this, I need to show you the changes that occur in your spine when it's not functioning normally. Now, if we look at the blow-up of this diagram we've seen before, we can see that the, with the bottom vertebrae tilted, the space between the levers is now big on one side and small on the other. Now, in real life, these spaces are filled with muscles and other tissues, so over time, these tissues adapt in length. Now, as well as that, when a joint is not moving, the tissues around the joint stiffen, and the muscles that move that joint weaken with disuse. Now finally, over time, the other joints and muscles in your nervous system will readapt to the abnormal function. Now what that means is that even though a chiropractic adjustment can give impressive relief, your spine will not be able to function normally with all those changes and adaptions. You'll need a rehabilitation program to help those changes readapt. Now what I'll do here is give you an outline of what's involved, but just like the adjustments, the process is complex and will need to be managed by professionals such as a chiropractor, osteopath or a physiotherapist with specialist postgraduate qualifications. Now, as an overview, the core of spinal correction program is repeated adjustments, with each one giving an incremental increase in the movement in the restricted joints. Now, other therapies are used to help your body start using this additional movement and to readapt. As I discussed in an article linked in the description, the muscles that have been tight for long periods of time develop changes that uh, not only cause pain, they can inhibit normal function. And the main therapies to help this are massage or some sort of soft tissue therapy. Now the next issue is that muscles and other tissues have shortened and weakened over time. Now these need exercise to restore. Now I mentioned before that using exercise to correct abnormal function is bad. 
So what needs to be done is use exercises so they take up the additional movement provided by the adjustment, but don't overload or force additional movement. Now there's also rest and medication. Now they do nothing to correct that normal function, but if your spine is very inflamed, they may be used temporarily to help it settle down in order for correction to begin. And finally, if there's catastrophic failure such as a ruptured disc pressing hard on the nerve, surgery may be needed. Now the main thing here is that too often when surgery is done, it's like replacing that worn tire we discussed before, but not correcting the wheel alignment. Now I hope that's given you a far better idea of spinal adjustments and spinal corrections. Now that was my job for over 27 years in practice and I'd like to finish off by sharing you why we developed our massages to help support this process. Now the first issue was that as I discussed in an article linked in the description, patients usually need a large amount of massage or soft tissue therapy over a long period of time. Now if it's all needed to be done by professional therapists it would be very expensive so patients would rarely get enough and of course not get better. Now, our massages allow patients to supplement their care with quality therapy at home. Now, the second and usually overlooked issue is that as this diagram shows the really important muscles that control the movement of the individual vertebrae sit very deep between the levers at the side of your vertebrae. Now, as well as being very deep those levers might only be a centimetre apart. Now because of that, it's physically impossible for a massage therapist to get to them using conventional massage. And also there's no way the jackhammering of a massage gun can get to them either. On the other hand, the vibrations from a proper vibration massager penetrate deeply and can easily go between the bones to get to those tight spots that otherwise are impossible to reach. Now all you need to do is place the head of the massager beside the vertebrae directly over the muscle. Now for those clinicians who haven't used a vibration massage like this before, here are three very useful pieces of advice. Now the first is by placing the head very specifically, you can direct the vibrations to the muscles that need it. For example, you can direct them at the muscles associated with a stiffened joint, while avoiding the ones associated with a compensated joint. Now secondly, tight muscles can work against trying to restore movement when you do an adjustment. Now if you use the vibration massager on them before, it can remove a lot of the resistance and make the adjustment far easier. Now finally, once you've restored some movement with an adjustment, the vibrations will further relax the muscles and help stimulate the circulation of nutrients. Now we've got chiropractic adjusting instruments that apply repetitive thrust in the joints in order to free them up. Now examples including arthroskin and uh, impulse chiropractic adjusting instruments. Now these things send the same vibrations, um, just a lot more of them for a fraction of the price. Now what I'd recommend you do is make your adjustments, assess the movement, apply the vibration to the joint and its intrinsic muscles, then recheck. Now you'll likely find it's moving a lot better. Anyway, if you have any comments, please pop them in the comments. Hey, thanks very much for watching. It has been most appreciated.